Hi, Gemini. This is your October astrology for all Gemini signs. Um, sun, moon, rising, and Venus, Gemini. I do want to make sure that I come right out and say, every once in a while I throw that out there. Um, if you're watching the video and you're, f you know, new to the channel, new, new to coming to, to, you know, watch my videos, and you're coming with the idea of astrology with love, Especially if you're coming under Venus signs. That's not going to be found here. More or less. The reason why I say that is. Is I don't see. Uh, Venus as love. So when I do astrology. I'm not reading it in that form. So if you're coming here. With the intention of. Finding love with the Venus sign. For me it's more sensitivity. Whether it's positive or negative. So you probably got the wrong girl. Right off the bat. I just wanted to make sure I throw that out there. There is definitely some, I feel 12th house-ish again, and issues with responsibility and authority. Some of this has to do with your Mars energy, which is what I happen to call the sacral chakra, and that's been coming up pretty much for everybody. Um, it's passion, action, aggression, fire energy. Mars is your warrior. It's your inner SWAT team. But it's also your inner confidence. And that's when I start switching it over to like that inner belly dancer. Belly dancer has to be confident enough to feel good about her or himself and what they are doing. And expressing themselves in such a way. But a warrior has to be just as confident. You know, and going after the passion, the action, the aggression of that warrior energy. So this has everything to do with the sacral chakra and how you feel and believe you can create about yourself. From the depths of how you feel. But this is going to go straight on up and move into, you know, um, creative expression as well as self-esteem. But this is going to go into power. Finding your power of yourself back. Getting yourself power back. I am definitely getting communication with some judgment, family judgment issues. I'm also getting um, Jupiter with some fear, burdens, blame, shame. Fear. Like anxieties and stuff too. Um, and this is still happening to do with part of that 12th house. Part of your hidden self coming forward and communicating both with, one is for the family, one is for, you know, um, dealing with your own fears and overcoming them. Anxieties and stresses and overcoming them. <laughs> There's a major abundance Coming in that is either working for or against your inner emotional security. Very much abundance and sensitivity. This all has to do with how you communicate to yourself or choose to communicate to yourself. But it's because of rules, walls, and boundaries that have to be shifted because of what you are illuminating within yourself is what I'm being told. And having some love for self. And I just keep saying green. And for me, that has to do with coming to a new level of growth. Coming to a new healthy level of growth. Soulfully, spiritually, on a mature level. <clears throat> and they're saying definitely growth for yourself and where you stand in overcoming some of your anxieties, some of your own communication with yourself and then bringing that out into the community and making the positive shifts that need to be made. But that's also going to deal with you addressing some of your morals and your own ethics is what they're saying. Letting go of the old you. All right, with that being said, let me jump into the astrology. I'm trying to run them approximately a half hour and just cut off with that. I'm trying to give you like the limelights, you know, the limelight of the month 
what's the important things for you to acknowledge of what's going on. And then I'm going to run down every house and let you know kind of what's going on with their energies this month. But I'm not going to get too much into all the aspects and everything. That would be more for um, in person. Or I don't want to say in person because I usually do most of my appointments over the phone. But that would be more for, you know, direct one-on-one. -on -one. So that I can get more detailed. Because with it being a general reading, it's not as easy to be so detailed when it's for everybody. But they are saying for you also, Gemini, this also has to do with you coming into understanding newer levels of your higher mind, your higher self. Getting a new consciousness with it, a new connection with it. Being connected more to your true depths of self. And bringing in your hopes, goals, and ambitions. Finding them. Realizing them. Analyzing them. Breathing them into life in a form is what I feel like I'm getting. Anything else? This is coming into a whole new re regeneration for you is what they're saying. This is like a rebirthing. A, a, like a... Look, at, I feel what I'm being given as a kid on a unicycle. Not a bicycle. It's funny because they're giving it to me on a unicycle. Like getting up there and learning how to, you know, stay on the unicycle and then be able to actually ride. It's not the same as a bicycle. It's a little bit harder is what I'm being given. But this is being able to learn how to keep that balance on all things. And then being able to go, but you're not quite ready for the go, is what I'm getting. Like I said, this is a growth period. All right, for the beginning of the month, we have, obviously, everybody's been talking about Pluto going direct on the 3rd. And that is very important. I mean, but Pluto is the only planet when it goes direct, or when it goes retrograde, when a planet goes retrograde, it turns inwardly and it's pretty much only communicating with you and talking to you. But when it goes direct, then it's talking to the rest of the world outside of you. Well, Pluto is the only planet when it goes direct that don't turn outward. It is always inward. So more or less, when Pluto goes direct, it stops whipping your ass. Because it's in overdrive. Now it's going to slow down and relax. Because Pluto is death, decay, and destruction for renewal, rebirth, regeneration. has really been hitting below the belt. And really trying to get to you and into your hopes and dreams and your desires. And make those changes so that you can understand what needs to happen to find yourself. However, Saturn's coming up. And they're both going to be in shadow. They're both just recently, recently went direct. And with them being direct, they're both moving forward, which is a great thing. However, like I said, this at this time, they're both kind of in shadow. They're not fully looking at things with a clear, positive, healthy outlook. They're still looking at some of those darker aspects of mirroring conversations within the rules, walls, and boundaries and what's keeping you from reincarnating coming into a new rebirthing in yourself. And they're saying this has to do with a wisdom that you are going to be finding at this time. Now, on the third, like I said, Pluto goes direct, but everybody's talking about Pluto going direct. Nobody is talking about Mercury going into Scorpio the same day. Scorpio is a very sensitive sign. Mercury is your communication don't forget, at the end of the month on Halloween Day, Mercury goes Mercury goes retrograde. So mid-month, Mercury is actually going to also go into shadow in Scorpio. All right? That's going to make it even more sensitive. Now, on the 4th, you have Mars moving into Libra. On the 8th, you have Venus moving into Scorpio. There's your sensitivities. Um, coming right in with the communication while it's going to be shifting from Direct to uh, shadow and into retrograde. So um, it's definitely going to be picking at sensitivities and the communication of what's going on in your Scorpio sign. You have on the 13th, you have the full moon in Aries. On the 23rd, the sun moves into Scorpio. On the 27th, you have the new moon in Scorpio. Then you have Samhain, which is also Halloween, where Mercury goes retrograde. But not that 
Halloween or Samhain isn't a powerful enough day on its own. But now you have Jupiter, Cirrus, and the Moon all coming within like three degrees of each other in Sagittarius. That's the higher self on a universal level. We'll look at and see what it is for you. Don't forget, Libra still has collective consciousness in it, which is Halmea, Make Make, which is the lotus flower. Vista is in retrograde. That's the soul fire. Then you have Pallas, which is also in Scorpio, and Eura, which is in Virgo. So, I mean, that's just your main important pieces. They're pointing out for me, definitely this has to do with Mercury going retrograde for you, most of this. Now, in your very first house, your self-awareness, your physical body, your personality, your appearance, your view of life, your image, your identification... ID, your core energy, how you see, how you're seen, and how you see yourself. There's nothing here. So there's nothing supporting you or going against you. It's just you feeling like you're in your normal awareness of life. But that's just the first house. The very first house, like I said, is your personality, your appearance, the core. But there's nothing here extra influencing it. You're in your normal Gemini area, Gemini feel. As you come into the second house, this is where self-worth, self-value, and self-esteem take place. This is also where our possessions of the small things come into play. This is how we create and spend our money. You have, this is cancer. This is also right now, it has the North Node in it. And it still is very close to the uh, Sirius star, technically, which is giving you that, like, Thor's hammer, that God's consciousness of you need to learn this about yourself. This is where it's taking from that second house back to that first house. Um, because it's still in that illumination of the Sirius star energy. Even though nobody's talking about Sirius star anymore, they're still incredibly close the North Node, and the Sirius Star, which is bringing that a new higher higher consciousness, uh, a God's consciousness, a goddess consciousness, a spiritual, soulful, higher self consciousness is coming into that second house going, where is my self-worth, self-value, and self-esteem, and what the hell is going on with it? Do I have self-worth, self-value, self-esteem? Am I comfortable in it? Do I need to reclaim it? What's going on? Because the North Node is all about this is what you have to learn in order to move forward. So this is asking you to get to a deeper level of depth of you. Self-worth, self-value, self-esteem. And when you do that, then it brings you back into your natural flow of energy. Flow of things because you're connecting to a deeper level of you. You're going deeper than normally you may have been because like i said that serious star and that north node are still very close in having communications and then it's also speaking to you about how you create and spend your money as well and what does that creating of, of that creating and how you spend your money also say about your self-worth self-value and self-esteem is it speaking to you deep enough deep deep enough of your inner truths and experiencing them. Then we're coming into that third house. This is Leo for you. You don't have anything special going on here either at this time. There's no planets at this time influencing it going forward or against it. So the, this means your communication, you know, doesn't have anything working for it or against it. As far as your neighbors, your journeys... I mean, your neighbors, your siblings, those that are close to you, they are speaking to you of, you know, your communication of up close and personal, but it is also your messaging system in general. It's your inner communi communicator, your inner brain is the communication of all the communications. It is your intellects, your details, your trivia, the communication of all communications, plus emails text messages, gossip, phone calls, everything that is a detail within that communication. And even though there's nothing here for you and Leo right now, remember, Mercury is communication and is going to go shadow mid-month. So it's asking you to pay attention to the details, pay attention to what is said 
and what is heard because the communication will slightly start to go a little bit sour, a little bit dark, a little self-centered and view things from a, a self-centered point of view mid-month up until Halloween. Now you have your... Your fourth house is Virgo. This is at the moment where Yara is. This is good. This is asking you, are you getting right with your inner emotional security? And you probably aren't having much of a choice. Because Yara in the fourth house is asking you, is pushing you into sacrificing commitment of understanding the true depths of self is asking you to get to the root of who and what you are. The true self. You know, the self that is at home that nobody really sees. Where is the truth of this all part of you that you aren't completely, you're so awkward with? This is getting past your inner emotional security. Getting past the child inside. Getting past, you know, the real roots of your upbringing and finding your inner truth. This is where your karmic lessons are learned and where the reincarnation is made. Yura being here or Jura being here is asking you, where's the sacrifice and commitment to yourself? And understanding what that will do by adding that inner emotional security. Tapping into what helps you find that inner emotional security. Then as you move into the fifth house. As you move into the fifth house. <coughs> this is Libra for you. The fifth house is your creative energy. It's your child energy. <clears throat> it's where your inner child is able to create and have fun and play. Do you have time to play? Are you making time for play? This is your pursuit of pleasure. This is where you find enjoyment in life. Well, at this point, it has how Maya in it and make make in it, along with the sun and Venus, not Venus, the sun and Mars. This is asking you again, are you confident? Do you feel confident within yourself? That's that inner sacral chakra and solar plexus coming into feeling empowered within your own self, your own ability, your own life, your own will. And then being able to find enjoyment by being who you are and doing what you want to do. Tapping into that, which brings that enjoyment to you, that pursuit of pleasure. Let that inner child free to express and be creative. The big question here is, are you? Are you finding it? Are you connecting with it? Because you have make make here. Make make is the lotus flower. And the lotus flower grows in the swamp. So the question of this is, is your collective consciousness realizing about how you feel about yourself, illuminating yourself, finding yourself, bringing the shine into those relation not relationships, into your, your pursuit of pleasure, your inner child. This is where your creativity sparks from. This is where you find the enjoyment. And if you're not finding the enjoyment, then most likely on the, le on the level of the lotus flower, you're still in the swamp. The lotus flower grows in a swamp. And then it kind of lifts up as it grows and it starts to break through the swampy, nasty water. And it's kind of in between the little bit of the water and the little bit of the air. That's as it's starting to breathe and, and find clean, get clean and healthy. And then it starts to grow and stretch where it blooms. The idea is, is your creativity in the swamp? Is your creativity in the swamp and you can't find any creativity because you're not giving yourself any fun, any joy? You're just ho-hum. And if you can't find that, that's because you're still in the swamp on that creativity level. You're not tapping into that child. You're not tapping into that creativity and that pursuit of pleasure. This is also your sports, your hobbies, your drama, your is your creative expression, your personality, your personal interests, and stuff along this line. So is it... In the swamp, or is it starting to break free and you're free and you're finding time for play? Or are you enjoying life? This is the question. Why aren't you smelling the lotus flower instead of swimming in the swamp? Is the big part of the month in that area. 
Because like I said, you have the collective consciousness there, the lotus flower, the sun, and Mars asking you how you feel about that and how you feel in this energy. As you move into the sixth house, this is Scorpio for you. This is your daily routines. And this is where your sensitivity will be. This is... Yeah, I was making sure I was right. This is your sixth house. This is your daily routines, your daily patterns, your everyday mundane tasks. And on these patterns, these mundane tasks, these routines, the people, places, and things that you consume in energy, are they healthy for you or not? Because if they're not healthy for you, then they're keeping you from getting to your play. They're keeping you from enjoying your creativity. They're keeping you from, you know, your pursuit of pleasure and your enjoyment in life and being able to express your inner child, which then keeps you from your inner emotional security, as well as your self-esteem, your self-value, and your self-worth. So it's it. this all grows backwardly and I say backwardly because you're going backwards in the houses, not that it's backwards. It, it Your self-worth, I mean, all of that self-worth, self-value, self-esteem, inner emotional security, creativity, child energy, pursuit and pleasure all comes from if you have time in your routine to express and be you. And are you taking time to figure out who you are, to express yourself, to come into this? Because if your daily routines, your daily mundane tasks don't support that in a healthy way, then it's showing you where you're actually working against yourself. Now, this is the sixth house is what we were speaking about. At this time, you have Mercury and Venus that's going to be here all month. Mercury is also going into shadow. Like I said, going straight, going direct, shadow, and then retrograde. And Scorpio, where you are very sensitive. you got Venus coming in on top of that sensitivity in the shadow communication. And it's going to be speaking to you about where these routines are not working for you and where they are. Sensitivity goes both ways. It shows you when you're happy and you enjoy things and it also tells you why you hate them. The communication in shadow is going to be tapping into what Venus has to tell it. You also have a very positive thing here, though. You have a palace, which is the uh, Athena, the warrior goddess, trying to help you strategically strategically think your way through these patterns and what makes it happen for you in healthy ways so that you are serving yourself. You are in a healthy environment. You are in healthy routines. You are bringing all that healthiness to you, which then goes back to building yourself in a healthy way. But it all comes down to the people, places, and things that you consume in your energy. Now, um, your seventh house is where Halloween's energy is going to be. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back a minute. That sixth house, those daily routines, is also going to be taking a new energy because you have the new moon at the end of the month, which means throughout this month, there's going to be something either shifting or changing within those routines because something new needs to bloom or be at least able to be seen and start coming into a bloom come the 27th with the new moon. New moons are all about new beginnings, new goals, new directions. And from the 13th to the 27th, you should be having something illuminate and shift so that it came from the full moon into the new moon. And it's definitely going to be showing itself in that sixth house of your daily routines, your patterns, your mundane tasks. And the healthy people you do or do not have people, places, and things, the energy you consume. How sensitive is it? Is it making you healthy or not? You're going to be acknowledging that. As you get into the seventh house, this is the relationship zone for you. Yeah, and this is where Mercury, not Mercury, this is where Jupiter and Cirrus are coming together. Now, um, at the end of the month, on the last day of the month, on Halloween, you have the moon, Cirrus, and Jupiter all within, I think it's like three degrees. That is going to be a powerful day on Halloween. But all month, this energy is going to be building until the moon adds its subconscious truth to it on Halloween day. 
This is your relationship zone. This is everything that you are partnered with in relationships from your pe from your friends to your loved ones to your spouses, the ones you're dating to your children, to your parents, to your working environment, any kind of relationship you have that you care about, you have a relationship with. Anything you care about, you have a relationship with. And in these energies, this is Jupiter bringing extra abundance and extra knowledge up into these relationships. And with it is bringing that higher consciousness of the truth that whether you want to see it or not is bringing that knowledge to it. Now, as Ceres is coming closer to these to Jupiter in these relationships of Sagittarius, it's asking you what is being nurtured and what is not. What's being nurtured, what's being neglected of yourself within these relationships. And where are you finding happiness or not? Where are you truly being yourself or not? You know, where is the relationship healthy or not? Is it being neglected or nurtured? And come Halloween day, it's going to illuminate itself from the unconscious because the moon will be on top of Ceres and Jupiter. Definitely bringing more attention to it on that day as well as that's the same day that... Um, Mercury is going to go retrograde. This is, like I said, your seventh house, which is definitely speaking to you about communicating with these relationships, neglecting, or what's been nurturing. And how much do you will the relationships to be? And I mean it just that way. What is your will within these relationships is what I'm being told for you to acknowledge. As you come into the eighth house, this is where Capricorn is, rules, walls, and boundaries. Capricorn is rules, walls, and boundaries, the brand new foundation. It is also, you know, where Pluto and Saturn have just gone direct, finding, you know, the rules, walls, boundaries that must shift for the reincarnation and true foundations. This is saying the relationships that are here that we already were talking about that's going to take place during the new moon and what's being neglected and what's what's being neglected and what's being nurtured. On top of it, you're going to be addressing what are the responsibilities in them? What are the true responsibilities in the, these relationships? What are the joint finances, joint resources, joint efforts? Are they joint? Are they just? Is there balance? Is it fair? Then you're going back into looking at, you know, the actual relationship itself. So rules, walls, boundaries, are they fair in the relationship? Are they honestly fair? Are you actually able to start being yourself? Are they supporting you being who you are? Then, you know, are they being neglected properly or are you neglecting or nurturing them properly? This also has to do with your efforts, not just the outer community. So this is definitely talking to you on that level, but it is definitely having problems with your self-worth, your self-value, and your self-esteem. Coming into knowing the depths of yourself and truthfully speaking to the depths of yourself. Figuring out who you are, because this is definitely in a conversation that's very tense and not comfortable is what I'm picking up. This has to do with exploring your will, exploring your truth, exploring you to a new level. And then where the relationships should be from that point. The, uh, the ninth house, which is your higher self, has nothing in it right now. This is your ethics, your morals, your spiritual urges, your higher self your psychic energy. There's nothing here going for you or against you. You're just in your normal energy. <clears throat> your 10th house is your honor and your reputation, your prestige, your prof professional career, your uh, financial success and financial social foundations. It's the authority and responsibility and community that goes with that honor and reputation. It's your, it's a lot of times is our working environment. This is Pisces for you. This is, has a lot of unconscious energies coming through because Neptune is still in retrograde. It also has Lilith here. This is asking you where you feel good about yourself within the, 
another relationship, but with a relationship with the community, relationship with the job, with your honor, your reputation, your prestige. Is it supporting your financial success and your social foundations that support the financial success and authority and responsibilities? Because Lilith is here with Neptune asking you, are you just dreamy? Are you actually creating? Are you only wishful or creating? I'm out of time, so I'm going to come right back and finish your last two houses. I love you guys.